Hello photographers, my name is Spiros Heniadis and this is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. This week we're talking about the different metering modes available on the camera and if you haven't had a chance to see the previous video on metering, check it out because in that video we learned about how the camera meter actually works. And knowing how the meter works is helpful in understanding how the metering modes work and how to choose the best metering mode for the situation that you're shooting in. Every camera has a meter in it and pretty much every camera allows you to change the metering mode. And what the metering mode does is allow you to change how the camera meter evaluates the entire scene. In that last metering video, we learned that the camera meter is always trying to achieve an average brightness of 50% for the photo. And that does not change no matter what metering mode you choose on the camera. What does change depending upon the metering mode is how that average is calculated to achieve 50% brightness. Every camera typically has three to four different metering modes, which you can see here with the Canon and Nikon icons for those different metering modes. And the metering modes might have different names depending on your camera, but generally speaking from camera to camera, the metering modes are all basically the same. And what we're going to start with is the zone metering mode. Now on Canon cameras, zone metering is called evaluative and on Nikons it's called matrix and on other cameras it might be called honeycomb or multi or something else. Regardless of what the mode is called, it is typically the default metering mode on the camera that's set at the factory. And if you've never changed the metering mode on your camera, then you're probably using the zone metering mode right now. And what zone metering does is it takes the entire scene and it divides it up into a bunch of different zones. And the number and shape of the zones varies from camera to camera. So a camera might have five zones like you can see in this example that I mocked up right here, or a camera might have 500 different zones. It just depends on the camera manufacturer. What the camera does is it evaluates each different zone as part of the entire averaging process. But generally speaking, the center zone in the frame or the zone where the camera is focused for that particular photo is given preference in the average calculation. An example might be if you were taking a photograph of a flower. Let's say the flower is in zone one, and in zone two we have the sun. Now the sun is super bright, and that's going to really mess up the average of the scene. And if the camera just calculated a straight average, the resulting photo would look something like this. Because the sun is so incredibly bright compared to anything else, the average gets skewed so far towards 100% bright that everything else is overwhelmed in the photo and the overall image is incredibly dark and underexposed. So in this flower example, with a zone metering system, what's supposed to happen is the camera recognizes that the main subject of the photo is contained in zone one and that it's more important for what's in that zone to be well exposed than it is for the super bright stuff over here in zone two to be well exposed. Based on this, instead of calculating a straight average of all all the zones, the importance of zone two is reduced in the calculation, diminishing the impact the sun has on the overall average, and zone one with the flower is given more importance in the calculation, and in theory with those adjusted averages, instead of getting a photo like we saw before, the resulting photo might look something like this, where the zone that was deemed more important is well exposed, which is the foreground in this shot, and the super bright area where the sun is was not allowed to overwhelm the entire exposure. And with zone metering, sometimes this works out perfectly, but sometimes it doesn't. Because just like any other automatic function on your camera, zone metering is hit or miss depending on the situation that you're in. And the zone metering mode is the most complicated of all the metering modes on the camera because it's designed to be the automatic metering mode for you. And as a result, the zone metering mode is designed to be good for all around shooting. It performs a bit better in wide angle type shots, when you're shooting scenery, when you're shooting landscapes and cityscapes. Now the next mode we have is called center weighted metering. It might also be called center or center weighted averaging. Regardless of what it's called, the center weighted metering mode is the predecessor to the zone metering mode. Center weighted metering uses the same basic principle as zone metering in that there's a specific area of the photograph that's given greater preference in the averaging calculation. The difference between zone metering and center weighted metering is that with zone metering, the zone 
might change. It might be the center zone. It might be where the focus point. And on some cameras, there might be multiple zones that are given preference in the calculation. But with center weighted metering, it's always the very center of the photo that's given preference. If you take a look at this right here, you can see what I mean. The center is the area that is given the most preference in the calculation. And as you move out towards the edges of the photo, the importance in the calculation diminishes. The advantage of center weighted metering over zone metering is that with center weighted metering, you can get very predictable results. With zone metering, every single shot, the average is recalculated. But with center weighted metering, you're going to get very consistent results because the calculation never changes. Now, despite their differences, zone metering and center weighted metering very often give very similar exposure results. In fact, right here is a comparison that I did that shows the results of the zone metering mode on a Canon camera and the center weighted metering mode side by side. And you can see that the shots are nearly identical. There's just a one third stop difference between the two of them. So just like zone metering, center weighted metering is designed to be used for average all around shooting. Now after zone and after center weighted metering, we come to my favorite metering mode, which is the spot metering mode. And camera to camera to camera, it's always called spot metering. And spot metering gives you the most precision and control over what's being averaged in your shot. The downside is that not every camera offers spot metering. So you're going to need to check your camera or the camera manual to find out if you have it on your camera. Spot metering, as its name implies, looks at just one spot and averages that spot only, ignoring everything else in the entire scene. The size of the spot varies from camera to camera, but it's typically between 1% and 5% of the entire scene. Here you can see the 1% area, which is the green spot in the center, compared with the 5% area, which is the red spot around it. And you can see that both areas are quite small, and as a result, you're going to get a very specific reading off of a very specific area Area in the photo. Spot metering is good for when you're doing closer up work. Stuff like macro photography, tabletop or still life photography. And one really good example for when you would use spot metering is when you're taking portraits. I shoot a lot of portraits and when I'm shooting portraits, I use spot metering to get a good reading off of the subject's skin to make sure that their skin is well exposed. Another example is this shot we looked at earlier when we compared the evaluative and the center weighted averaging mode. With spot metering, reading off of the cactus plant, I got a much better exposure of the cactus because the bright light from the windows and everything else was ignored in the averaging calculation. The next mode is the partial metering mode. And just like spot metering is not available on all cameras, partial metering is also not available on all cameras. But if you don't have spot metering, you most likely do have partial metering. And if you don't have partial metering, then you most likely do have spot metering. And spot metering and partial metering are basically identical. The only difference is the size of the area that's looked at. With spot metering, the area is between 1 and 5% of the entire scene. And with partial metering, the area is between 10 and 15% of the entire scene. And you can see that right here. The green area is the 10% area and the red area around it is the 15% area. So it's a slightly larger area than spot metering, but it still gives you a very precise reading off of a specific area in your photo. Partial metering is good to use in exactly the same kind of situations that spot metering is. Macro photography, close up work, tabletop still life and portraits and scenes like that where you want to get a good specific reading. Now with partial metering and spot metering, the default area that's metered is the center of the photograph. But with some cameras, you can move the area that's metered with the focus point. And this is a really awesome feature. Let me show you what I mean. If we're using this focus point here on the upper right, and the camera allows you to move the meter with the focus point, you can see that the meter is now going to read off of that focus point instead of off of the center. There's one final mode to talk about that you might have on your camera, but you might not. And if you don't, don't get upset about it because this mode is the least useful metering mode in my my opinion and this is the average metering mode and I save this one for last because it's the simplest to explain the average metering mode just takes a straight average of the entire scene there are no fancy calculations no zones no spots no nothing it's just a straight average and really this mode is just a holdover from legacy cameras so if you have average metering mode on your camera you can go ahead and give it a try but to be perfectly honest I wouldn't really recommend using it in any situation because 
because it's not a terribly good metering mode. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. And if you have any questions about metering mode in general, head on down to the comments and let me know down there. And while you're down there, tell me what metering mode you've been shooting in. Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you really like this video, do me a favor and share it with your friends. But no matter what you do, get out there and take some damn photos. I'll see you guys next week. Ugh. Oh, this is miserable.